Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. If you're a rural Alaskan resident, consider applying for a seat on one of the Federal Subsistence Regional Advisory Councils by Friday, January 29, 2016. Applicants who have knowledge of the regional subsistence uses, customs, and traditions are needed. Council meetings serve as a forum for regional public involvement in subsistence management. Information at 1-800-478-1456 or email subsistence at fws.gov. The National Weather Service. Hello again and welcome to Saturday's show. Up on the uh, warning map here, we still have a winter storm warning out for St. Lawrence Island, Bering Strait Coast uh, through tonight and through tomorrow. Northeast winds gusting to 50 miles per hour, another three inches of snow, so those areas will be seeing visibilities occasionally reduced to a quarter mile or less. And for the satellite imagery today, uh, got a front pushing in toward the southeast coast there with more, uh, clouds back to the west there across the Gulf of Alaska and then across southern Alaska. And uh, the main rain producing area pushing in mostly to the southern southeast coast and then the precipitation still off the coast here all the way around, sliding on up into western Prince William Sound and uh, the Kenai Peninsula here and then back down toward Kodiak Island. In the west winds there and getting snow all afternoon there at Kodiak. And a lot of clouds here over south central Alaska with uh, mostly mid and high level clouds. A little snow occurring on western Cook Inlet. A trough up here to the north with that narrow band of clouds. And out over the Bering Sea, we still have a pretty good low pressure area here north of the Primloft, edging in toward Nunavak Island today, bringing uh, snow showers here across the interior and keeping the winds up in that uh, winter weather or winter storm warning going there for St. Lawrence Island, but improving back here along the central Aleutians, the next storm coming into the uh, far western areas there, bringing in some gale force winds and precipitation there. Had snow showers, gusty winds here occurring from the eastern Aleutians all along the Alaska Peninsula. On the chart today, uh, west winds gusted to 60 miles per hour across the Perbloss with uh, Rain and snow showers, mostly in the form of rain there, but snow showers from Unalaska Dutch Harbor up the Alaska Peninsula and west winds gusting to about uh, 46 miles per hour at King Cove this afternoon. And then uh, pretty gusty winds with uh, snow there, Kodiak Island. Snow showers here across the western interior, kind of scattered hit and miss, even less of that over the central interior areas and a narrow band of flurries there along that trough to the north, and also some flurries here along the eastern Arctic coast. And that uh, front, again, most of the precipitation remaining off the coast here this afternoon, and uh, again, pulling back in towards uh, Prince William Sound, where that front moves through tonight, and then the trough following it will keep uh, occasional rain and snow going across the southeast coast there, as well as the north Gulf Coast. Uh, some of that should uh, make landfall, Cordova, Yakutat, and those areas with uh, mostly dry conditions over Cook Inlet, maybe a few flurries and some possible mixed rain and snow in the southern Kenai Peninsula. This low pressure area continues to weaken and moves inland, so that should produce uh, cloudy skies, areas of light snow across the Yukon and Kuskokwim Delta area. Snow showers continue across Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula, and that trough uh, kind of hanging tough up over the north central interior there from uh, Eastern Brooks Range out across the Seward Peninsula. Still a little bit of light snow, but nothing that'll amount to very much. No change on the Arctic coast there. And then we've got uh, kind of a complex system out here to the west, uh, that low south of the western Aleutians there. So gusty winds and precipitation continue out in that area, but some ridging here pulling in uh, should make for a pretty good day for the eastern Aleutians drying out over the Alaska Peninsula. Could see some clearing as well here with much lighter wind conditions. But uh, gale to storm force winds here coming into the uh, Aleutian associated with that system with rain spreading eastward. Uh, less wind showers back to the west and that low coming inland now. So mostly cloudy to cloudy skies here across the uh, southwest interior with uh, scattered snow showers from the Seward Peninsula all the way down the coast to the Alaska Peninsula into Bristol Bay. 
and uh, rain and snow showers, Kodiak Island, uh, scattered snow showers or flurries here for the south central Alaska, most of showery conditions off the coast there, and scattered showers also for the panhandle. Looking ahead to Monday, no change there, just uh, scattered showers continue with this low still off the coast, kind of a south to north flow there. So uh, pretty gusty on the winds, uh, especially over the uh, southern inside water areas, going for 20 to 30 knots for Monday with uh, rain over the southern areas, any precipitation be in the form of mixed rain and snow or just plain snow for the areas to the north. Scattered showers along the north Gulf Coast. Main storming is staying down to the south here with a jet stream. Look forward to dry out, maybe some clearing there for Kodiak Island. Still uh, scattered showers, cloudy skies here from the uh, western Alaska range all the way out to the southwest coast. That low now tracking into just southern Kenai Peninsula, much weaker now, about 984 millibars. Mostly fair up to the north, breezy conditions there for Kivalina, Point Hope, maybe Kotzebue Sound. Through the Bering Strait looking uh, northeast winds. Uh, Gusting 35, possibly 40 miles an hour. Clouds along the Arctic coast. And then the next uh, low out here, keeping it windy and uh, showery here. Actually, windy with showers across uh, the entire length of the uh, Lucian chain and southern Bering Sea, but uh, maybe clearing out there for the Perbaloff Islands. And for temperatures this afternoon, starting out along the southeast coast, uh, 30s to lower 40s. Uh, temperatures range from 31 at Skagway, 43 down at Sitka with uh, 40 degree reading at Cordova, minus two Golcana Northway at 24 below this afternoon, 13 above there at Bettles and then back down towards zero at Fairbanks and back up to 13 over at Tanana, 27 in Palmer, 32 in Kenai, 33 both at Homer and Kodiak this afternoon, up to the north, uh, zero at Fort Yukon and a minus two degree reading there at Arctic Village, or at uh, Anatuvik Arctic Village, 13 below, minus six at Umiat, minus 11 over at Dead Horse, but three above at Kaktovik, minus one at Barrow, one above Point Lay, and uh, single numbers and teens here across the Northwest, but lower 20s there, both at uh, Golovin, White Mountain, and uh, Nome, with uh, 10 degrees, McGrath, Bethel at 32, St. Mary's had 21, and lower to mid 30s along the southwest coast. Out west, uh, 30s about sum it up for the Perloffs, the Aleutians, and even the Alaska Peninsula all the way up. And then you get into the 20s here toward King Salmon. For the lows tonight, uh, looking uh, 20s and 30s here over the Panhandle. Same thing for southern Alaska, below zero north of the mountains there with the coldest temperatures over the north slope areas. Uh, relatively mild here across the southwest coast with upper 20s. And then for the highs tomorrow, below zero for the North Slope and Arctic coastal areas, uh, zero to 10 above here through the central interior, except Northway probably staying below zero, uh, maybe making minus one, and uh, 30s to lower 40s for the southeast coast. Flying weather tomorrow, kind of a narrow band of IFR here across the Panhandle, otherwise marginal conditions up to the eastern Gulf Coast. Uh, more IFR also along the southwest coast here and a patch of marginal VFR up over the west central north slope areas. IFR uh, coming eastward across the Aleutians. Anatuvik and Adigan both VFR tomorrow and Lake Clark and Merrill occasionally marginal at times. Same forecast for rainy. Windy VFR, Isabel wide open, Mentasta pretty good as well. Tanita VFR, Portage VFR for that uh, location and uh, Chilkoot and White, occasionally marginal. Freezing levels, 2,000 feet here up over the Gulf of Alaska, but hugging the southeast coastline there. Otherwise at the surface out here over the uh, north central Bering Sea areas, 2,000 feet well to the south. Uh, three areas of icing tomorrow, below about 12,000 feet here out over the Aleutians and western Bering Sea. Another area here along the southwest coast and Bristol Bay below about 8,000 feet. Gulf of Alaska in across the Panhandle, areas of possible rime or mixed icing, uh, light to isolated moderate there below about 11,000 feet. Upper level wind flow chart, basically high pressure at 33,000 feet across uh, much of Alaska, westerlies at 55 knots along the Arctic coast, and then a trough uh, digging in well back out here to the west, the main jet well to the south of the state, uh, still a trough here swinging in across uh, the eastern Gulf of Alaska and southeast coast. At 9,000 feet uh, south to southeast, 10 to 35 knots there for the Panhandle. Light winds, south central Alaska, the North Gulf Coast, right up into the eastern interior areas. Northeasterlies, 20 to 30 knots, uh, the Bering Strait, and then westerlies here, 
at 40 knots coming around this low as it pulls inland across Bristol Bay into Kodiak Island and then even stronger winds with that next storm out over the central Aleutians. 3,000 foot winds, 50 to 55 knot winds out there over the southern bearing and the Aleutians with that storm out in that area. And uh, northwest 40 knots across Bristol Bay diminished to about 25 knots across Kodiak Island. Pretty light winds out of the east through the interior. Westerly is at 25 for the eastern Arctic coast. And light uh, winds, uh, maybe 30 knots here right off the panhandle, otherwise 5 to 10. Turbulence wise, uh, maybe some light to isolated moderate chop, just skiffing the coastline there from Port Alexander, possibly over to Cordova and the eastern Arctic coast. Also maybe a little bit of light uh, or moderate turbulence through the Bering Strait, a bigger area with the stronger winds out over the central Aleutians. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. ISMA, the International Snowmobile Manufacturers Association, whose members are Artco, Bombardier, Polaris, and Yamaha, is proud to present Safe Riders. You make snowmobiling safe. Snowmobiling is one of winter's most enjoyable and popular pastimes. The development of superior engineered snowmobiles, the building of a diverse network of trails, and the dedication of club volunteers have all contributed significantly to the expansion of this great sport. As responsible manufacturers, the partners in ISMA have developed the following presentation to assist riders with an orientation of what they might encounter while snowmobiling, how to deal with situations that occur, how to get home safely. The video is also intended for the season sledding. As an experienced rider, you're often looked to for instruction from the novice. Safe riders can help you help them. From handling tips to recognized hand signals, safe riders can only add to your wealth of knowledge and confidence when called upon to assist a new snowmobiler. After all, when it comes to safe riders, you make snowmobiling safe. Snowmobiling is like everything else you do. The more you know, the better prepared you are, the better you will perform. For a new rider, the first thing you should do is carefully read and understand all materials provided with your snowmobile. Then take a snowmobile safety course. Please understand, this video is not intended to replace a safety course. It may be used as part of an educational program. A course provides detailed information in classroom and field settings where you can interact and ask questions and get a first-hand demonstration and feel for the curriculum. It is highly recommended for all riders. Your local club or association has information on safety courses. As much as snowmobiling is great fun, if you aren't prepared for the winter elements, it can be very frustrating. Before you even think about your sled, make certain you are personally ready to handle your ride. This should start with your clothing. A good warm suit is a must, preferably one that is windproof. If you're riding at night, you should have reflective materials. Under your suit, always wear layers of clothing. This will allow you to adjust for any temperature changes. Your choice of gloves and boots is an important one. Fingers and toes are always the most susceptible to frostbite. Keeping them warm and dry is critical. Water-resistant boots and quality high thermal rated mitts or gloves are a must for all snowmobilers. There are two types of helmets to choose from, an open face and a full face. The full face offers better protection from the elements when driving. Regardless of which you choose, a helmet must fit snug. To test the fit, have someone try to turn your helmet while it's on your head. If it moves freely or feels loose, it isn't the right fit. Only helmets with dot or Snell label have been tested and approved. A helmet won't work if it falls off, so always fasten and tighten the chin strap. It only takes a second. A face shield provides protection from the wind, snow, and debris, but fogging can be a problem. You may want to consider a double lens shield or an electric one that works similar to a car's rear window defroster. A face mask can also prevent fogging by working to deflect your warm breath away from your shield. Goggles can also be worn with an open face helmet. Okay, you've taken care of your physical readiness. What about your mindset? Do you know what you need to know? It's 
always wise to check the weather forecast for temperature and possible storms. Get a map. You should know your route. Is there any open water or thin ice? Have you checked with the locals for conditions? Did you take note of where you can get fuel, food, and shelter? And for any long distance riding, always leave a copy of your route with a friend or relative to check in regularly. To be legal and avoid problems, make certain you have the proper insurance, registration, permits, and licenses to ride. States and provinces often differ in their requirements. Information is available from government agencies and clubs. To sum up, your mental preparation is quite simple. Know before you go. Thinking ahead can assist with unforeseen circumstances. Carrying a drive belt and spare spark plugs, a tool kit, flashlight, and a tow rope can help with the mechanical needs. A first aid kit, fire starting materials, a compass, a whistle, and high energy food and water can prove necessary in surviving a serious situation. Many people carry their cellular phones. Bring yours if you have one. Thinking ahead can help you avoid many problems. It's common sense, a big part of being a safe rider. <laughs> Snowmobiles are great machines, but it's important to remember they are motor vehicles. They're powerful and unique in their operation. So it's very important to get familiar with how they operate and what you need to know to ensure they keep performing. This begins even before you start the machine with the materials provided by the manufacturer, such as the owner's manual or operator's guide. Carefully read and understand the materials. They're written by the manufacturer who built the snowmobile. It does contain the basic things you need to know to improve your enjoyment in operating a snowmobile. The pre-operation check is something a safe rider does before every ride. Under the hood, make certain your drive belt is in good condition. You're carrying a spare belt as well as spare spark plugs. Then check the fluids and fill them if necessary. Don't forget to secure the hood latches. Check the lights and windshield for cracks and dirt. The idea is see and be seen. Always test the throttle and brake controls for proper tension and operation. Just give them a couple of squeezes they should return to the same position without sticking. The track should be checked for ice buildup, alignment, and possible tear. We give the handlebars a turn to examine the steering and alignment of the skis. Check the skis for wear. Remember, these checks and any necessary repairs must be done prior to starting the sled. For a quick reference, review the information decals on your snowmobile. Once you're confident that both you and the snowmobile are ready to go, it's time to start up. Your owner's manual or operator's guide will direct you on the type of snowmobile you have and the proper method of starting it. Once started, a safe rider's mindset is respect. Respect for the power of the snowmobile, respect for your limitations, and respect for the environment. Start off by testing the throttle for the power of the acceleration. Hold on and squeeze slowly. Then do the same for the brake. Listen to the engine. If something doesn't sound right, have it checked. It's too late when you're out on your snowmobile. Before you leave, make sure all your systems are functioning, including both headlight beams, the taillight, the brake light, and the emergency shutoff switch. It's also a good idea to check your ski runners to make sure your sled will respond to the steering. You've checked your sled and prepared yourself, and there's only one thing left to do. Get comfortable and ride safely. As a snowmobiler, there are a few things that are deemed the rules of riding. They're mostly common sense, but experience tells us they often get overlooked. Many rules are similar to driving a car. The first being, don't drink and drive. Alcohol has been proven to distort your depth perception, impair your reaction time and coordination, and impair your natural sense of caution. Operation under the influence has unfortunately been proven to lead to fatalities all too often. For the safety of everyone, zero tolerance, alcohol-free, is the only right way to ride. Statistics clearly show that alcohol is a contributing factor in many of the accidents and fatalities of both new and experienced riders, as well as innocent victims. When stopping at a rest area or for the night, 
Remember, not to leave your keys in an unattended snowmobile. It presents an invitation to thieves and unknowledgeable riders of all ages. Racing should be left to the racetracks, radar runs, and organized race events. Public snowmobile trails require responsible riding. The faster you go, the less time you have to react to a situation, and the more braking time is required to stop, especially considering you're riding on ice and snow. When riding, always stay to the right of the trail and leave room for oncoming traffic on the left. Be sure to keep sufficient distance between you and the sled in front. You never know when a circumstance will arise that requires you to slow down or stop. Falling trees, wildlife, or a groomer may be just around the bend, so stay alert, look ahead, watch for signs, and keep your distance. When riding in a group, stay with the leader, but never pass the leader, and know where the person is behind you. If you're riding in a group, for greater visibility, install a mirror to help keep an eye on the person behind you. Always keep a safe distance and keep your place in line. Snowmobilers have a series of hand signals that are used on the trails to communicate with each other. It's critical to know them and use them correctly. Pointing the left arm straight out indicates a left turn. Left arm out, bent at the elbow, with forearm raised at a 90 degree angle, signals a right turn. Left arm out and forearm angled down to the ground advises to slow down to proceed with caution. Left arm raised straight up indicates you are stopping. And when stopping on the trail, pull over to the extreme right of the trail. Always dismount on the right to avoid traffic coming from behind. Never stop on a curve or a hill. Our beautiful trail systems and riding areas exist because dedicated snowmobilers have worked with landowners to obtain easements for the enjoyment of other snowmobilers. Don't trespass. Stick to the trails and designated riding areas. They are legal, safer, and lead to great destinations. Off-trail riding in non-designated areas could present problems with access privileges from property owners. Trails and riding areas could be closed if you trespass. Fences represent a serious threat, and unseen wires can cause serious accidents. Although an active railroad line is inviting as a trail, it is not a trail and poses great danger for those who ride them. Trails are most common in the central and eastern region of North America. The western and mountain regions offer trails with large expanses of designated riding areas. Be a safe rider. Stick to the trails and safe riding areas. You make snowmobiling safe. South to southeast 2025 up to the north. Small craft advisories tomorrow for Clarence Strait. Otherwise, uh, diminishing winds as you head north to 15 at Lynn Canal. Then no swing around to the north at 25 knots there for northern Lynn Canal. Small craft advisory southeasterly is 25 to 30 knots, central and southern inside channels. Southwesterly is 20 to 30 knots here along the coast, east 25 there for the north coast. And for uh, Sunday, northern Cook Inlet, light northeast winds, uh, northeast 15 for Prince William Sound. Small craft advisories for the north Gulf Coast for those 25 knot winds. And uh, small craft advisors also for Kimishak Bay across the Barren Islands, 25 to 30 knot winds there, 30 knots here for the east side of Kodiak Island, much lighter there for Shelikoff Strait. And then light variable winds for Kimishak Bay and Prince William Sound on Monday and a northeast breeze blowing down Cook Inlet. Otherwise, uh, west to southwesterly is here for the North Gulf Coast, uh, back to Kodiak Island, 15 to 20 knots. For Bristol Bay, westerlies at 30 knots, uh, 30 to 35 knot west winds here blowing across the Alaska Peninsula with uh, seas up to 21 feet still here on the Bering Sea side. Then those come down to 12 feet, uh, gale force southwesterlies though, and even uh, stronger gales here from uh, Cape Sarachev up to Sitkanak from the west and south with seas 17 to 20 feet. Aleutians, uh, eastern areas, uh, Small craft advisories for south to southwest winds turning southeast, increasing to gale force here over the central Aleutians. And storm warnings tomorrow west of Adak, and then back down to the gales towards Shimia. And then westerlies, uh, 40 to 50 knots here for Monday across the central Aleutians, uh, northwest 30 back to the western areas. And uh, 40 to 55 knot winds from the west southwest for the eastern Aleutians with seas 20 to 24 feet. Along the southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island, a full gale out of the west, uh, and then small craft advisories, 25 knots. Gale still blowing across St. Lawrence Island, 
Perloffs down to west at 15, higher pressure moving in. And then for Monday, those swing around to the east at about 15 knots. And we've got northeasterlies 20 to 30 knots for the southwest coast. Still looking at gale force northeasterlies there for St. Lawrence Island. And up along the Arctic coast, uh, brisk wind advisories here for the east side, but dropping off uh, quite a bit as you head to the west. We'll down about 10 knots, 15 there. And then uh, northwest 10 for the central coast, northeast brisk wind advisories 25 to 30 knots, Cape Beaufort down to Wales. And uh, no change uh, for Monday through these areas there. Still have those brisk wind advisories going north 20 here for the western coast. Westerlies 15 to 20 knots on the east side. And looking at uh, for tonight again, this uh, front moves through into Canada and another trough comes in. So it's going to keep uh, occasional areas of rain and snow here across the southeast coast. North Gulf Coast back in toward the Kenai Peninsula. Uh, showers should be on the decrease there for Kodiak Island with continued gusty winds. Uh, snow with this low moving into the southwest interior. Numerous snow showers along the Alaska Peninsula. And then just a narrow band of flurries with that trough up to the north. And then the next system out here to the west uh, bringing gale force winds. And then tomorrow those uh, gale and storm force winds in the central Aleutians, front spreading rain almost to the eastern areas there, but staying west of Nikolsky throughout the day. Uh, low pressure over the southwest interior means uh, cloudy to mostly cloudy skies with uh, snow showers across that entire area and showery conditions for the southeast coast, uh, scattered showers for the north Gulf Coast and fair over the interior. And then for uh, Monday, this thing slips down even south of Kodiak Island. Should be kind of in between systems there, but uh, still scattered flurries and light snow showers over the southwest interior to a lesser extent south central Alaska, Copper River Basin. Windy with showers for the Panhandle and the North Gulf. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.